Hi, Marco Di Stefano here, and welcome to this new behind the scene video, The Rite of Spring. So after a long work of scoring every instrument and checking every single note and uh, inputting the one that were missing, then I had a uh, MIDI uh, to start from zero. So as you can see, where you have multiple instruments, uh, every instrument which is reflecting one of the uh, instrument track on the original score. The layout that you see here comes from my orchestral template, so-called Flow. If you don't know, it goes on my website, marcodistefano.art. Uh, behind Cubase, there is VN Ensemble Pro. So you can see that here you have, there are all the instruments loaded. For the woodwinds, I've mainly used the Spitfire Symphonic woodwinds uh, with the exp expansion microphones, which were sold on the Spitfire Audio some time ago but I heard that they will be back soon with a new product. For the brass, I use also the Spitfire Symphonic Brass, always with the expansion microphones. Then for the trumpets and the horns, I'm also using some from the studio, uh, studio Brass Professional. First of all, because the piccolo trumpet is not in the symphonic series. And then because for a specific part, I prefer to use the trumpet from Spitfire Studio Brass than the one of the symphonic. And then for the strings, I'm mainly using the Spitfire Symphonic strings uh, for the main sections. So, and then whatever there was a divisi, I actually am using Spitfire chamber strings. So you can see here that you have violins one uh, divisi, violins one divisi two, uh, and so on. And I must admit that this works very well. And then for the solo strings, I'm using Spitfire solo strings. So you, you, there is a violin, there is a viola, a cello and a bass. For the percussion, it's quite easy. I'm using the Spitfire percussion, so but there are only some timpani, uh, a bass drum and a triangle in the composition. As I said, I tried as much as possible to reflect the original score. So here you can see that sometime I had to duplicate some instruments, like you have a flute one, flute two, and then piccolo flute one, piccolo flute two. But at the same time, you also have the flutes A2, uh, or because sometime in the score, it's a soloist which is playing, or sometime are two, are mentioned like two players uh, for the same uh, line. Let me now show you the mixer, which also comes pre-configured with the Flow Orchestral template. So actually I had to do very little things here, just adding a Neutron 2 uh, instance on the instruments. And then in the end, uh, the reverb, I'm using a Lexicon reverb. So this one, Lex Chamber, what you can see is a very little one. Uh, and then in the end, uh, I'm adding also a Ozone 8, uh, for the mastering. For the EQ, I'm actually tweaking very little because I wanted to use as much as possible the sounds how they come out of the Spitfire audio libraries. So there is a very little EQing just uh, to maybe highlight the frequencies of the various instruments. Concerning the use of microphones, I'm using about six microphones per each instrument. So the close, the tree, the ambient and the outrigger mix like that as you can see but then also a bit of the stereo and the gallery microphones so this of course takes a lot of resources in terms of cpu and ram and i will show you later on that at a certain moment i have like under 10 gigabyte of ram uh, loaded during the execution and i reach 70 percent of the usage of the cpu if you see now in idle, I am I already have under three gigabyte of RAM allocated. Of course, I did a uh, update sample uh, pool in contact in all the contact instances. So here there is only loaded the uh, the samples which are really used, and that's my CPU. So a uh, 7960X from uh, Intel with 32 cores. Another important thing I want to show you is the use of the tempo track. You cannot uh, achieve a realistic uh, sound if you don't tweak the tempo. So you, you just don't put like uh, 50 all the time. So otherwise it doesn't sound realistic. But as you can see here, I try to create a realistic tempo like if I were really conducting the orchestra. 
Okay, so now let's quickly go into the composition. It's not easy to find, show you everything in one screen because there are a lot of instruments. The first message I want to give as usual is that you need to record automation and you need to record automation at least for the expression, the modulation and the vibrato. So you can see here, it's everywhere. I do it using my F Fader Master Pro from JL Cooper, which I really love. It's a great hardware. But as I'm showing you now, sometimes I also tweak other parameters, like in that case is the controller 22, which refers to the closed microphones. Because there are certain instruments that you want at a certain moment to be heard more in the orchestra. And a way to do that is to increase the close microphones for that uh, instrument at that moment and then push it back to the level that it's set for all the other instruments. So, of course, for example, this is the case for the bassoon, which starts the composition. You can see that initially the close uh, microphone go high, high and then goes back again to the normal level. Now let's see inside the MIDI editor. So you can see that there is a, a work done about choosing the right articulation for every melodic line. Uh, sometimes it's a long legato, but sometimes it's a marcato, staccato, or whatever it is. Uh, don't forget that whatever you are using short note, like the marcato here, you need to also edit the velo velocity. Otherwise, you won't have good results because for these ones, velocity is not important. But for the mar for the short ones, velocity is what gives actually the is like the modulation. And so on, you can see that this is done for every instrument. There is always the right articulation. And the fact that all the articulations are there for all the instruments is something that is already pre-built into the flow orchestra template. The reason why I prefer to record uh, automation instead of MIDI sense is because I use the quick controls there and uh, that are connected with my remote controller. And I prefer to do that because it gives me the opportunity to see all the automations at a glance. So, uh, and also to compare, for example, the automation of one instrument with the other of another instrument. Let's now listen to the bassoon starting. Look, for example, the vibrato. So how it goes up, whatever there are sh longer notes. And also look how important it is to have always uh, um, dynamics that uh, makes the notes off, for example. Let me give you a small tip if you want to go or do go for an exercise similar to that one. So the way I do is that typically when all the MIDI and all the instruments are already there, I start to select uh, a part, which in that case, okay, the first three bars. Then what I do is that I, I solo the, I start typically with the instruments, which is the lead instrument inside this part, which is the one that should be heard more. And I start to record the automation for these uh, instruments. And then uh, what I do is that once this is done, then I add another one, adding it to the solo and I record also the automation for that one. And so then I go instrument per instrument till that section, till these three bars are completely done. And then when these three bars are completely done, I pass to the next uh, four or five or 10 bars, whatever it is. And this way it's very good because you always have, uh, so you work per instrument, but you also work per section. Because if you just uh, try to work horizontally where you do the, the instrument for all the composition and then you do another one, at a certain moment you will see that they don't match each other and there is not the right balance that you want. So let's push play again and let's hear this part. So with the now horns. Now there are multiple multiple clarinets which enter here. So the piccolo clarinet there actually is not present in all my sample library, so uh, it's just a normal clarinet.
And here it comes, the Cor Anglais, which I love as instrument. So let's look inside again. Uh, every articulation, in that case, it's a simple going from legato to long. Let's look now here in details what the bassoons do. So here is mainly using legato. And here are the first strings in the composition which are playing pizzicato. You can see that here, for example, for the violins too, I'm using the pro, uh, sorry, the divisi, which comes from the chamber strings, as I said before. So it's not always easy to have the right instruments which comes out of the others in a, in a tutti like this one. So you have to be uh, to carefully uh, work uh, on with the dynamics instrument by instrument, starting with the one uh, that you want to be heard more. So let's look, for example, in this case at all these woodwinds together, what they do. And the question will be which one is or are the instruments which I want to hear more. And here, for example, the bass clarinet is key. Which is fine because this one has different frequencies than the others. Then here you have a section where actually all the flutes are blended. It's like if it was one single instrument. So I try to have really the same dynamics for all of them. At this moment here you have uh, the oboe which plays a very important role. Here it is, is the oboe 2, so with this staccatos with very high velocity. And then here this and piccolo flute, I really love that one, it's amazing. So for this one I'm using the multi-tongue for the piccolo flute and some staccatos for the flute. Let's look at the clarinets, what they do here. This part here, I love the alto flute, which is actually playing at a lower range and makes a very nice effect. And here we have a clarinet piccolo which uh, plays in uh, fortissimo and uh, actually, as I said before, I don't have the clarinet piccolo in all my libraries, so I'm using just a normal clarinet. So as you can see there, it's mainly some staccatos, uh, no, legato in long. Okay, so here you can see that from the modulation and the expression we are really at the max. And also there is uh, the 
control 22 which is the closed microphones which increases uh, up to uh, the, to the maximum now you can hear some bass instruments entering because till now actually we were a lot of the high frequencies and now you start to hear low frequencies and here you have this piccolo trumpet which comes from the studio brass professional because you don't have a piccolo trumpet in the symphonic series Yes, so as always, the right articulations makes the difference. Let's look a bit more in details what the strings do. So here at this stage we are mainly using uh, uh, solo strings. Let's listen again all together. So let me show you what how I did uh, these uh, quick uh, woodwinds here. I'm mainly using the gap, but you can see that these are a combination because some for some of them I'm using the staccato, for some I'm using the legato, it really depends on the run that you have and uh, you need to find the right one. And here we come back to the bassoon. And then there is the sections where actually you have all the strings playing spiccato. It's why it's a very famous part of the composition. So look here, I uh, the way I'm using the velocity. An important message here is that uh, so don't put the same velocity everywhere. Try always to make a small changes in the velocity so that it will give uh, a much more sense of uh, realism. So for example here you can see it's not always exactly the same value. Also for the top ones it's going a bit up and down, up and down, up and down. So together with the strings, we also have horns, actually eight individual players, which are playing here, staccato and this is forzato. <laughs> uh, 
and when we play all together we see it's, it's really blended <laughs> So you don't hear very much the difference between the two. And then here you have this bassoon. That's the chord anglais and as we said before also here this is short notes so be sure that you have a good velocity setting. Now let's look at the oboe. That plays these together with the trumpet which this one is from the symphonic uh, brass. So let's do something cool here. I'm going to put a loop in uh, these bars and I'm going to add instrument by instrument. Wow, so you can see how all the instruments sums up together nicely in the end. And then here you have the strings which goes from forte to piano suddenly. Voilà, always the velocity is key. And this happens because when the strings are piano, there are other instruments which actually uh, take the lead. Let's look which ones. Bassoon. And this tenor trombone which just comes out of the place and it's uh, uh, wonderful. And now you will have the oboe.
So to here make the accent I'm also using a staccato note and I'm just making sure that the accent uh, is a bit uh, higher velocity than the note itself. And here you have the bass drum and the timpani. A short moment of orchestral piano in preparation for the next part. And let's look at the way I did these uh, faster runs of the violin. So I'm using a performance legato for the quick notes. Where is it? Okay, here. And then the spiccato for the last note, which sounds very good. Now there is this melodic line with the horn from the Spitfire Symphonic Brass. So this deserves a bit to show you the programming, the automation. And pay attention to how important is the role of the vibrato, the controller 21. Which is increasing in the long notes. And here I want to show you the strings in detail. There is a very nice section which uh, plays with collegno. Ah, really rhythmic. In this part it was challenging to have all these strings uh, and uh, to uh, actually play in piano uh, because uh, the main the leading here should be to the flutes For these trumpets, actually, I didn't manage to have the result I wanted with the symphonic uh, brass trumpets. So I'm actually using four different trumpets for from the studio uh, Brass Professional. So let's see the automation. You see it's all uh, on the max. Also the microphones. And now if we look inside Vienna, you can see that for these uh, piccolo trumpet, I'm actually using uh, all, all the microphones that are available uh, because I really need, want, need to have a uh, sound which is very uh, on top of the others. Let's now look at the articulations which I used. So it's always the same. So you have uh, marcato, uh, then you have the legato. And then here you have uh, something that goes from tenuto, tenuto to marcato, uh, which gives a very nice effect. And now let's listen all together.
so let's do like before here let's put a small loop and uh, let's add instrument by instrument Let's go on. That's a wonderful rhythmic uh, moment with a lot of tension. Mainly done with the staccato, spiccato. actually use the legato fast. Let's now listen together all these strings. And now let's set again another loop and uh, to listen to this uh, final part where actually there are a lot of instruments playing together.
and now let's just listen to it with all the instruments together <laughs> And this time, let's listen section by section, starting with the woodwinds. Something else I want to show you is the task manager, actually the, the usage of the CPU uh, during this part, which uh, I find it uh, Cubase is really using very well all the CPU. So you can see here that the load is spread really through the 32 cores. We have a peak which is about 70%. I must admit, I'm quite impressed with the performance of this uh, of this new machine. So I'm using a, 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 so a latency of 1024 for this one. And uh, so if you want to know more about my PC, you can find it in another video on my YouTube channel. Uh, there I describe all the specifications. That's all for this video. I thank you very much for listening. Don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel and to share this video and uh, I look forward to the next one. Bye bye.